Welcome to the next video in our diner scene series here. Now as you can see um, I've added another blind to this window over here and all I did basically was copy these objects over here, slide them over, um, I rotated them open a little bit more and uh, took a few off the bottom there just to make the length a little bit different so they don't look so so cookie cutter. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, um, an error in uh, judgment, I guess, that I made uh, when we made the blinds is you can see that um, this one and this one that I, um, I've already made the adjustments on, but this one is sitting right in the window, right where the glass would be. So we need to uh, just adjust the position on that one a little bit. So let's uh, look at it from the front here. Uh, let me see. I'll just hit A twice to make sure that we don't have any other objects selected. Uh, B to border select and just drag across those. Uh, looks like we got our room, so I'll unselect the room. Um, kind of look at it from a view something something like that ought to be good enough. And we'll pull this out in this direction. So it's sitting, it'll be sitting in front of the glass window and just pull it up closer to the ceiling. So now it's, uh, it's positioned correctly. They're now, the blinds are now sitting in front of uh, where our windows are going to be later on. One other thing I thought I would do to add just a little bit of interest is on this blind here. Um, let me go ahead and save the file before we make this adjustment, uh, just in case it doesn't work out, we can always go back. Now you'll remember that this object has an array modifier on it and we can adjust how many slats we have in the array, but in object mode I'm going to go ahead and apply the array on, on this object. So that means when we go back into edit mode all of this is now uh, an actual mesh. So what I'm going to do is pick one of these slats. Uh, let's see, we'll hit A to deselect. I'll hover over one of these vertices. Hit L to select everything that is linked to that one slat. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Let's do it this way. We'll do this. Uh, I'm going to select uh, that vertex. Uh, numpad period to zoom into that one. And I want to select, uh, we'll go into face select mode, select that face, shift S, cursor to selected. So, so now the 3D cursor is right on that face, on that end. And we'll zoom back out. Now um, we'll select the entire uh, shade by hovering over one of the faces here, hitting L. Well, let me go back into uh, vertex mode. We'll hover over one of the vertices, hit L to select everything that's linked to it. Now I want to change my pivot point down here to um, 3D cursor. And uh, let's see, we'll go into front view, um, orthographic. And I just want to hit R to rotate just a little bit and we'll make that one a little bit crooked. Okay, back in the object mode. We'll go back into perspective mode and let's get back down here. Okay, so now it I think it just adds a little bit of interest uh, to the scene just to have um, that shade looking uh, a little different uh, from the other ones. Okay, Enough said about that. Let's talk about what we're going to do outside um, our diner here. I had some thoughts. I was thinking of uh, a tree, maybe with some branches hanging down, but I don't know that I want to do that. I'm thinking more along the lines of a, a city scene outside. We'll put some buildings outside, and um, if we want to, we can add a tree on the sidewalk later on or something. But first, let's go ahead and block in where we want uh, those buildings to be. So let's go into top view. We'll go back in the orthographic uh, by hitting numpad 5. 
uh, shift S cursor to uh, center so our cursor is right back in the center of the grid and in object mode shift A we're going to add a plane and this plane is going to end up being our ground uh, that all of our buildings are going to sit on so let's uh, hit S to scale we'll scale it way up like so zoom out we don't need it under our diner so we'll bring it up to right at the edge of the diner there maybe okay it looks like we'll probably need to scale some more in X so I'll go ahead and do that and let's go back and back into perspective mode and look out our window here all right so now we have our ground and it looks like we're scaled far enough in X so we don't see the corners out there should be all right. All right, back in the top view, um, I'm gonna go into wireframe mode so we can see the grid here a little bit. Now we know um, about how big our our bench seat is here, right? So I'm thinking if we go out, um, let's see. Our street out in front of the diner, if there's a street running straight across, is probably going to be, oh, maybe maybe that wide. So I'm going to put my 3D cursor right there. Shift A, we'll add a cube. Now let me center on that cube. And I want to make the origin of that cube at the bottom. So when we scale it, which we're undoubtedly going to do, it will scale up from the bottom and we won't have to worry about scaling it and repositioning it and scaling it again and repositioning it to get it the right size. So let's just tab into edit mode. We'll grab uh, G to grab all the vertices, uh, Z to lock the transform to the Z axis, control to turn on snapping so it snaps to the grid in those grid increments and we'll just snap it right up there. Um, to the bottom. So now the origin of this object is at uh, the bottom. So when we scale, it's going to scale um, from that and it won't go below the ground plane. Um, we'll turn our uh, pivot point back to uh, individual origins. Alright, so let's look at this from the side view now. And if our diner here is a one-story building, we know that we have to scale in Z if we want to make a one-story building, uh, we'll probably make it about that high because this is the height of the inside ceiling. You figure the roof is going to be up about there. So that's about the size of a one-story building. And um, let's scale in Y to uh, be roughly the size of our diner there, about, about the same size. Okay. Now we'll scale it uh, in X to be uh, another small building right across the street from the diner. All right, let's go into Z. I mean, go into uh, <laughs> solid view again. Uh, let's look back out our our window here. Let me pick our center on our bench seat there. Okay. All right. So this is the building that we have across the street from the diner now. Um, that's your basic one-story building. I think... Uh, I think I want to move that building down a little bit. So let's uh, grab an X and move it. Let's see. Got that end. I don't know. I want to see the end of it. So we'll move it about there, I think looks good. All right, let's shift D to duplicate that. X to lock the movement to the X axis. We'll move it on down. And uh, I don't know if we want them real close together. Let's put like a little alleyway in between. So we'll make it about that far apart. This building, I think, I want to make a uh, two-story building, I think, just to have a little variety. So let's go into side view again remove the perspective distortion by going back in the orthographic and let's scale this building in Z um, 
about twice as tall. So I'll move it up to to about there. Um, I think we're good in the X direction. All right. Let's look and see see what we have. Oop, trying to get back in into view here. Uh, all right. All right. <clears throat> so those are the that's the view of the buildings uh, from out uh, the window of the diner. Um, this one may, be, may look a little short. I don't know. Uh, first, they might be far away. Let's, let's look at the top view again and see how we're doing. Um, I don't know. Let's move that a little bit closer, maybe. Maybe we'll put that one back a little bit. Let's see. The good part about this uh, part of the process is you can just kind of move things around to where you think, uh, where you just think that they look good, and there's really nothing, uh, nothing lost. If we decide we don't want buildings here, we just delete them and put something else there. Okay. Um, I think I like that. Yeah, I think I like that. Looks. Looks pretty good to me. Okay. Let's pick this object here and we'll rename it. Uh, whoop. We'll call it, I don't know, building one. And this one, we'll just name it building two. Building two. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I think looks pretty good. Um, if we decide to render a shot from down here, we're going to need some more buildings. But let, let's just concentrate on these two buildings first. All right. Let's pick this one. And uh, we'll hit M to move. And we'll move it to uh, a vacant layer with nothing else on it. All right. Let's go to that layer. Here's our building um, that we're going to be working with. All right. Doesn't look like much now, but let's look at some reference pictures to see uh, what exactly we want to do. Um, you know, we're going to want a door and maybe some windows and. Uh, we may want to do a little detail around the roof and maybe some gutters. Um, let's look at some reference pictures and see what we can see. Um, let me pull some stuff up. I'm going to pause the video for just a second and be back with some pictures. Okay, it's been a minute or two and I did some looking around and I found a picture that I actually like quite a bit. Um, this picture here is a, a one-story building. Um, we're going to have to make our, our blank here a little bit taller, I think, to accommodate the roof. But a one-story building next to a two-story building that's actually pulled out um, a little bit in front of the smaller building. There's some awnings, uh, some tables out on the sidewalk there, uh, a lamp post, um, a sign out in front. These are all great ideas uh, that we can use to, to model our building here. So let's start um, by uh, modeling the, this one-story building here on on this object, building one. All right. So let's go into uh, front orthographic mode. Now I've switched my uh, measurement units to meters but that's going to be a little difficult for me to, to tell so, um, how tall things are. So I'm going to go back and switch it to the Imperial units, um, uh, to the Imperial system and feet. Uh, because once again, here in uh, the United States, we're, we use feet and inches. And um, if you were to tell me that a building is you know three meters tall, four meters tall, have a general idea, but 
it's not so easy for me so I have to use feet uh, feet and inches um, are what makes sense to me if you're using the metric system um, use what makes sense to you but at any rate um, here in edit mode um, let's turn on our edge length again and you'll notice that we have uh, this issue that I think we spoke about before it says that two feet and we know that this is not two feet we definitely know that this is not two feet that's because we've scaled the object uh, in object mode and now our uh, our scale uh, I don't know exactly what you call this our uh, scaling is off so we, we've scaled it 16.1 in the X direction which is this way which is why when we look at it it says two feet but it's actually much longer now you can either um, apply control a apply um, I usually do rot rotation and scale but you can apply the scale here or over here under scale you can just set everything to one uh incorrect sorry about that let's see in nope i guess we do need to apply that control a uh, apply rotation and scale and then everything goes back to one but the object uh, doesn't change all right so now we can see that we're you know 32 feet long about 10 feet high uh looks like we probably need to add another f five feet a height on at least um to accommodate for for that roof there so in edit mode now let's uh, scale in Z and we'll scale up until uh, well I don't know let's try let's go for 16 feet approximately okay whoop scale Z uh, hit down shift for a little finer control and there we go okay so now we're 16 feet tall but since we scaled in edit mode now we're below the floor so we'll just grab everything move it up so that that origin point is uh, even with the base we don't have to be 100% exact at this point we'll, we'll take care of repositioning that later all right so now our object is uh, the correct height let's put our door in and it looks like our door uh, I don't know if we'll make our object as long as this I guess we could but let's put our door in first and then that'll help us get a little bit more perspective uh, actually let's see in object mode let me turn this window back into um, our outliner and I will pick our human reference object uh, hit move to the layer that we're on let's see does that work okay oh yeah we uh, we hid the object that's why it's not showing up I believe um, when you hit H uh, out here when you select an object and hit H it hides it but it's the same thing as coming over here in the outliner and hitting this little eye here um, if the eye is closed the object hidden um, you can uncheck it or I mean open the eye here to uh, reveal the object um, this uh, little icon here uh, restricts your ability to pick the object in a 3d view and this one uh, is whether or not the object is going to be rendered uh, when you go to render it out so all right let's pick this object okay I don't see it Oops. go back to layer one there it is uh, we'll hit move and we'll move it over to the layer where our building is all right so this will give us a little bit of perspective uh, this is our human reference object if you'll remember all right <clears throat> So let's uh, let's give this object uh, some color so we can see it. A couple ways to do that, um, but let's just give it a material and we'll make it kind of a 
a blue color. Uh, so it stands out a little bit. Okay. All right. Back into edit view. Um, yeah, I think we can work with that. Um, okay. So let's put our door in. So on our building object, we're in edit mode. Let's uh, control R. Uh, we'll put a loop cut and uh, let's see, we'll move it off to the side a little bit, maybe, maybe about there. We'll put another loop cut and we'll move it over and we'll make our door uh, three and a half feet wide. You can see the edge on the bottom right where our character object is says 3.5 that's 3.5 feet. I think that's a good width for a door to start out anyway. Okay so we'll, we'll click to lock that in place. Now let's define the height of our door. So we'll put a loop cut there. That's right in the middle. That'll be uh, eight feet tall. Uh, let's bring that down to uh, hold shift to get some finer control. Not working exactly. Okay, let me move my mouse out here. With this loop still selected, I'm going to hit uh, GG to edge slide. That allows us to move it back and forth. And with the mouse further away, uh, let me hold shift and we'll see if we can get that right at seven feet. Nope. Well, we'll, we'll leave it there for now. I think that looks about right. Um, okay, so that is the top of our door. Let's bring our picture back. Okay, that, that defines this red area on the door. Let's put the skylight or the transom here over the door. So let's uh, control R. We'll make another loop cut. And uh, we'll make that about two feet, I think. Yeah. Okay, so this will be our door here. This will be the transom over the door. All right, I think that looks, looks about right. And then uh, all this up here will be will be the roof. Okay. All right. I think that looks good. Let's go back in the object mode. We'll pick our human reference and H to hide. Was, uh, I don't think we need it anymore. All right. I wonder. Yeah. Let's go back in the solid view. Um. All right. Let's go ahead and define our door area a little bit more. So control tab, go into face select. We'll pick that face that's going to be our door. We'll zoom in on that. Okay. What I want to do is uh, hit E to extrude and just pull it straight back. Uh, not too far. About like, like that I think looks good. Okay. Let me look at our reference, see if we can zoom in a little bit here. Okay, I'm just looking at this area above the door. Looks like that's all pretty much even. Um, okay, let me pick this face. Uh, well, hold on a second. Control Z to undo, undo, undo. Uh, pick this face, this face. E to extrude, bring them both straight back. Okay, like so. Okay, I think that looks good. All right, let's. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Let's. Uh, huh. Control I to invert our selection, and H to hide everything else. Now, uh, let's just work on the door on its own. So we want to make a door that looks similar to that. It's uh, got this big window in it. Got a little plate at the bottom. Um, door 
handle there and a lock. Okay, well, let's work on that. We'll pick this face, um, hit I to inset, scale it in, in um, about like so, yeah, about like so. Um, control tab, we'll go into edge select, select this bottom edge, and this we're going to pull up a little bit. So this area here will end up being our window. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I'm going to pick that face. Um, e to extrude, pull it back just a hair. Uh, yeah, something like that I think looks pretty good. Okay, that's going to end up being our window. All right, let's see if we can't get that detail on the bottom of the door here. It uh, looks like it's basically just a kick plate with a little molding at the top. So let's take that face. think what's the best way to do this um, okay in edit mode I'm going to shift D that face left click to lock it in place uh, scale it down now I want to um, to make these edges here vertical so let's go in the front view going to go into edge select, pick that edge. Let's see what happens if we do scale x 0. Yeah, that straightens that edge right up. Okay, so we'll pick this edge, s to scale and on the x axis to 0. <clears throat> okay, so that straightens that up so it's now a square. And it's laying right on top of the bottom of our door there. So let's go into uh, face select. We'll grab that face now. Uh, e to extrude, pull it out a little bit. Okay. Let me pull back a little bit, uh, go into perspective mode, but sometimes that changes your, gives you a fresh view on things when you're working. Doesn't look like it's long enough to me. So I'm going to hover over that face, hit L to select everything that's linked to it, and these numbers are kind of getting in the way now, uh, and I don't think we need them anymore. So let's go ahead and turn those off. Um, we'll turn off our edge info length because I don't think we need them. Let's uh, scale those in X and bring them out so they're even, or just about even with uh, our glass there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good and we'll move the whole thing down so it's closer to the floor so it mat or closer to the ground so it matches our reference a little bit better. Okay, we have our basic shape here for our kick plate at the bottom of our door. Um, may want to grab that face and make it just a little bit thicker. So that seems like it's a little a little more substantial there. That's interesting. Okay. So we have that. Now let's see if we can make that uh, that detail on on the top edge of this face. So, okay, once again, uh, we'll pick L to link everything that's linked with that. Uh, Control I to invert our selection and hide everything else. So we can just work on this object or this part of the object without being distracted. Um, this looks like it's just a a routed molding on the top. So let's go into side view. We'll remove our perspective. Uh, okay, wait a minute. We'll go into front. This is how we were looking at it. So, all right. This is going to be the front edge. We don't need this face. So let's hit X to delete that face. Uh, so we won't get confused now about what, what, whether we're working on the front or the back. Um, I'm going to turn off. Uh, back face culling for the time being, just so it doesn't get confusing. Okay, so we're looking at this object from the side. This is the front. 
let's go back in the vertex mode. Um, looks like we're, we'll need uh, whoop, an edge cut or loop cut. Uh, let's see. We'll put one yeah, about there. And what we're going to do is we'll slowly define um, the shape that we want here. So I'm going to box select this vertex here so I make sure that I get the one behind it. And uh, we'll move these back. Alright, so that molding looks like it comes out. Alright, then there's a... Uh, we'll put another loop cut um, about here. Deselect that one back there. Pull this in. Okay. Put another loop cut uh, about here, maybe. Uh, and we will deselect this one. Pull that back out so that's even. And looking at it now, I think we need to pull these back like so. Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. And we'll pull these back just a hair. Okay, another loop cut. Right about here. Deselect those. Whoops. We have those deselected, and um, we'll pull them back down, make them about even with that other, with this one here. And I apologize uh, if I am kind of saying a lot of ums and ahs and doing all that, but it's uh, turns out that trying to record and think about modeling at the same time is a little more difficult than I anticipated. <laughs> Okay, let's pull this out now so that it's even, or it looks about even with, uh, with the bottom here. Okay, so now we've kind of made um, a little detail there at the top. Now this is going to be seen from so far away that I don't, I don't think we need to do much more to it. It's actually going to be very small and seen from far away. But as a matter of good practice, let's go ahead and um, we'll add a uh, subsurf modifier to it. Bump our views up to two. And we'll use the uh, same technique that we've been using on our other objects. We'll just sharpen up uh, the edges on everything. Okay. So, all right, let's see what we got here. From side view, it looks like we need uh, we need one there to pull that down. We need one there to better define that. Uh, pull that up there. Yeah, like so. You, you get the idea. Um, this I think we want to we want to be a little more rounded, so we'll just kind of kind of eyeball that. Yep. These points down here I think we want to be a little more sharp, so I'm going to pull those edge loops in a little more. Uh, and I don't know, I kind of like like that one rounded like that. So let's see what we have. Okay, whoop! What happened there? tab into oh my goodness what do we got oh <laughs> we've added our subsurf modifier to our entire object um, I forgot that we were dealing with an entire object here so let's um, we'll select everything that's linked to uh, this detail here since we don't want to add our subsurf modifier to everything and um, Oh, let's see. Is it uh, P? Yeah, we'll separate by selection. 
Uh, so this is now its own object, and we'll just call this uh, kick plate. Yeah, kick plate. Good enough. Okay. So now we'll uh, select our. Okay, let's see. We've got. Okay, that <laughs> this object is labeled building one. This object is labeled kick plate. So on our kick plate object, we'll remove the subsurf modifier, and we will rename it, well, okay, yeah, we'll rename this <laughs> building one again, building one, and uh, this object down here, we'll rename it uh, kick plate, okay. I don't think we really needed to add the subsurf uh, to that, but uh, I don't know. Just to uh, just for good uh, for good practice, um, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Um, we can always go to the uh, subsurf modifier and just uh, disable it there. And if we look at it from you know across the street, you know from inside the diner. With it on or off, I don't think it's going to make any difference at all, actually. But anyway, makes for good practice. Okay, so we have our kick plate on our door. Um, let's see, what do we want to do next? We need to define the. Uh, transom, I think, above our door here a little bit. So let's see. Okay, we are on our building one object. Let's go into whoop, edit mode and we will alt H to unhide everything. Okay. So this is going to be our window. Let me zoom in on our... Okay. It looks like that window goes right up into the brick there. And it doesn't look like there's much separation between the door and the window, but there's there has to be something in between there. So I'm going to make... Um, let's see. We'll put um, another loop cut um, right above the door, just like so. Go back in the face mode, uh, select this face, and I just want to, oh, we can't pull that out. We have to um, extrude, pull it out just a little bit, not out to the front of the building, but just out enough so it looks like there's a divider between the top and the bottom there. Now, when it comes time to, to clean up this object, we are going to have some extra faces because we've made an extrusion against here. So that face there, um, we can go ahead and delete. Um, same thing on this other side. That face, we can hit X, delete faces. And this face, if we wanted to, we, we could we could do some adjusting on that um, and make it so that um, yeah, make it so that it doesn't go behind this object here. But uh, I don't think I don't think that's going to be worth it. It'll be more more work than it's worth. I think so. Anyway, when we're done modeling this object, we'll go through and we'll delete all the extra faces and, and whatnot that we don't need. That's that's part of the cleanup process. Anyway, in, in the way that that I like to do it. Okay. So let's go back into uh, object mode, and here's how our door is coming so far. I think so far so good. Um, I just gave that smooth shading. We'll make sure that that is set to smooth as well. Um, looks pretty good to me so far for a door. Let's um, shift select layer one, go back into uh, perspective mode back in our diner here I'm gonna pick our bench uh, center on that so 
All right. Here's what we have so far. Um, of course, if we're looking, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. We can get some of that kick plate in there, I think. Uh, I kind of like to see the corner of those buildings. Looks pretty good, I think. All right. At any rate, um, I think this is probably a good place to stop for now. Um, all we've done is make a uh, a little bent slat or whatever in this blind here just to add some variety. Um, we fixed the position of our uh, of our blinds because we had them too far back in the windows. Uh, we've added some some buildings and we've started blocking in our our door here in the uh, one of the buildings across the street. I think so far so good. Um, next time. Uh, I think we'll block in some of these windows and maybe we'll put some awnings out in front. I think that would look really cool, some awnings out in front of our building. And we'll work on some of these details. I think they call that uh, dental work um, or dental molding maybe. <laughs> I don't know. If, if anyone knows um, and you happen to be watching this video, leave a comment. I think it's called dental molding. I'm not sure. but uh, And we'll work on some details on the roof here in this building across the street. Uh, maybe put some chairs, I don't know. Um, but we'll leave that for next time. I hope you're uh, getting something out of these these videos. I know I'm sure having a lot of fun working on this. I think this is a great project and uh, I'm really enjoying myself and I hope you are too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.